Iran's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard last week launched a solid-fuel satellite carrier rocket into space, the country's official Erna news agency reported Thursday. The report quoted Gen. Amarali Hajizadeh, chief of the Guard's aerospace unit, as saying the test was successful. He said it marked the first time Iran used a solid-fuel rocket rather than a liquid-fuel one. He said Iran will produce lighter rocket engines in further space projects. Last month, Iran said it launched a rocket with a satellite carrier bearing three devices into space, without saying whether any of the objects had entered Earth's orbit. The State Department at the time said it remains concerned by Iran's space launches, which it asserts pose a significant proliferation concern in regards to Tehran's ballistic missile program. The launches come against a backdrop of negotiations in Vienna trying to revive Tehran's tattered nuclear deal with world powers. Iran, which has long said that it does not seek nuclear weapons, insists that its satellite launches and rocket tests do not have a military component. Western press reporting on the first 100 days of Iran's new president, Ebrahim Raisi, has naturally focused on his impact on Iran's nuclear and missile programs. But in Iran, officials refer to three, not two, power-creating industries, nuclear, missiles, and space. And it is space, more so than either nuclear or missiles, where Raisi has focused his early public efforts. And it is Iran's moves in space that will probably present President Joe Biden with the first challenge of the post-nuclear deal era. In his first 100 days, Raisi has moved to place his imprint by reinvigorating Iran's space program, the results of which will be visible in the coming months and years. Raisi has now set in motion a process that will result in Iran launching more satellites in the coming year, unveiling new space launch vehicles, and breaking ground on a new space launch facility in southern Iran. These developments will understandably be interpreted by Western media in the context of Iran's missile programs and the broader security situation. But it is important to understand that Iran is also deeply committed to the economic, military, and security uses of outer space. The Biden administration will have to choose how to respond to Iran's growing presence in space. Will the United States try to balance its legitimate concerns about proliferation with Iran's right to access space? Or will it treat Iran as a pariah? hoping that vocal opposition to Iran's space launches will somehow produce a different result than the same approach did with North Korea. Raisi is very publicly attempting to reinvigorate an Iranian space program that has been struggling in recent years. His new communications minister has criticized the state of the space program left by his predecessor, he called it sorrowful and backwards, and sacked the head of the Iranian space agency. Raisi chaired a meeting of the Supreme Space Council, the country's highest level space policymaking organization, which had not met for more than a decade. At that meeting, Raisi committed Iran to launching more satellites into low Earth orbit and reaching geostationary orbit by 2026. Iran has two space programs, a state space program and a parallel program run by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. The state space program is under Iran's president, who chairs the Supreme Space Council. The council, in turn, oversees the Iranian Space Agency, which contracts with entities under the communications, defense, and science ministries, and increasingly, Iran's private sector. We use the phrase state space program rather than civilian because Iran's military is fully integrated into this program. The Revolutionary Guard's space program exists outside this structure and outside of Raisi's control, 
just as the Guard Corps itself reports directly to Iran's supreme leader through the armed forces general staff, not to Iran's president or defense minister. The Revolutionary Guard has organized and implemented its own parallel efforts to develop launchers, satellites, and ground facilities for military purposes. The Guard has described its space efforts as a super project, a barparaza, that integrates a complex of projects related to satellites, launchers, and satellite ground stations. To implement these efforts, the Revolutionary Guard manages its own parallel ecology of implementing organizations including research centers and a university. The relationship between the state and the Revolutionary Guard space programs is captured by a term often used to describe American defense contractors, competimates, a portmanteau of competitors and teammates. These two programs mostly compete, for example in their efforts to develop space launch vehicles, but they also collaborate. Over time, the balance between competition and collaboration has shifted back and forth. The presence of the Aerospace Force Commander, who oversees the Revolutionary Guard's space efforts, at the recent meeting of the Supreme Space Council is one sign that the balance may be shifting in the direction of greater collaboration. Iran's state space program under RISI is organized around two main goals, mastering the space technology cycle, Charkayi Fanavariyi Fazai, and sending humans to space, Ensign Bifaza. The space technology cycle is by far the larger effort of the two. This encompasses Iran's development of satellites and the space launch vehicles to deliver them to various space orbits. The space technology cycle also involves constructing facilities across the country to launch and control satellites and receive and exploit their data. The language of a cycle seems to be borrowed from the nuclear field, where Iran's goal is to master the full nuclear fuel cycle. The conception is consistent with a regime that emphasizes self-sufficiency, cod kafi, in the development of technology. The humans to space effort is far smaller, but very real, and is aiming to launch an Iranian astronaut to orbit on board an Iranian launcher by 2032.